two and a half years. We had never had a violation. We had never had a problem. We had a great um, relationship with Wire. And they came through and said, listen, we've partnered with Checkout.com. They don't like adult. You guys are out. So we had to shut our product down. So now we are scrambling to still have a third party option because nobody's doing this. Like people are building it. They're constantly getting shut down. So we're going to try our hardest because we still need this. Like I, this, I still believe in this. This is why I joined this company is because sex workers still need to be treated fairly. Yeah. Um, all of my work is legal. Everything is done online. Like for the reasons that I'm cast out of this is because they just don't like it, right? Like this yeah. is just a, a a narrative that we are high risk where the data doesn't actually reflect this. Um, so I talk about this a lot. And last two years ago, maybe I was in um, an article and I was bitching about this whole thing. And a lobbyist wrote me and said, listen, I think that I can help you. I worked in cannabis before this and I was able to get them payment processing. I think there's a big market, like a big opportunity here. And I'm trying to get it back on the financial banking committee. This would be a good win for me. Would you meet with me? So I met with him and he was great. His name is Pierre and he's fucking wonderful. And so I sent him to the FSC and he's been working with them for over a year. We've gone to um, DC twice and we're trying to lobby for financial, uh, no financial discrimination in any legal industry because we can't write it to where it's like the whores need rights too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like nobody's going to go for that. However, the Republicans have already dealt with this with guns and oil. So they've already seen how, fine, you know, these companies are discriminated against or the, the people that work for them. Um, and then the Dems are like, you know, they, they want the marginalized to be represented and they mm -hmm. have experiences through cannabis. So we're having both sides agree with us and stand, support us. So if we can't get tied to a bill, we're going to write our own. And it'll wow. essentially be that no legal business can experience any type of financial discrimination. Which, um, which feels like fucking it, huge. Which feels like it makes sense. Which feels like it makes sense. It's only fair, right? I mean, it sounds like it would make so much sense for, you know, financial institutions to support legal businesses. And in fact, when I've talked about the financial discrimination that the adult industry faces to, you know, the regular layman, they're like, well, how could they do that? How right. could they shut down your bank right. account? Like that, that's not fair. That's discrimination. I'm like, yeah, but if you look at the small print, banks are private institutions. Yeah. So technically, they can discriminate however they want, right? Until a law is written. Right, yes, until a law right. is written. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, and obviously, if you were, they were to discriminate against, like, a race or, you know, gender or something like that, which, you know, obviously has happened in the past, um, that wouldn't be okay with anybody. But it's been very difficult up until now, and I hope I see the trend changing for anybody to rally for sex workers because it's just like, oh, well, you made your own bed, lie in it, and you're all degenerate whores, and you yeah. deserve everything that you're that is coming your way. And it's yeah, like, and 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 I, to, to to add to that, the people that we were meeting with, they believe that, right? Like they don't want to stand behind the whores, but they also like see that this is a you know a fucking problem. It leads to really sh like my own personal story is. I, as of two months ago, I've had 36 accounts shut down between social and payment apps. I made a funeral for them. I made little graveyard <laughs> for each, yeah, little tombstones for each account and like did my little photo shoot with my flowers and shit in my black dress. Oh yeah, like I'm gonna fucking ride on this shit, right? Like anything I can monetize in my life, that's what I'm doing, Right. you know, whacked off or whatever. Um, but it was also like, I lose that content. I lose that community. Like I use, I lose all these things. And I'm never violating mm -hmm. any, any terms of service. I'm selling my socks. I'm not nude. I'm over age. My TikTok went down, um, for being a nude minor. Well, I'm 38. I've never taken my clothes off on TikTok or gotten any clothes. Uh, the video that got me uh, suspended, I was in sweatpants. Um, and I, you know, I go to appeal and it's immediately denied and I lost all, you know, all my good. And they won't let you, and they won't oh, talk nothing. to you. They won't even talk to me. Yeah. They won't even talk to me. Um, I luckily got my username back after a year, but you know, it's just been a whole fucking fight in, in every platform I have. I have that same story. My Instagram, I'm on my third one. I mean, there's just everything. It's just yeah. always a fucking battle. So not only is this money, right? This is also our social, our, our community, but it also lends like, this is my business. Now I have to start over with that content. I have to start over with my community building. Like this is, this is a, not to mention the income that it's already doing. Yeah. Um, so in addition to all of that bullshit, I couldn't get a mortgage and I make very good money. I had money that I was putting down. I was building a home and my mortgage company was like, listen, we don't like what you do. 
you have the you have your 1099s and all of your IRS stuff for years that prove that this is a viable business, but we don't really like it, right? And they can do this. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have facts or data, and they can call us high risk, even though that the data and the facts don't show that. Um, it's just this narrative that they run on. So they wouldn't let me on it. So I had to get married to get a fucking mortgage, which is a real problem when you're trying to get divorced. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a real issue because I had to put my husband's name on my house and my cars and my electric bill. I mean, all the things that I have to be legitimate on paper, I had to put in his name. And now we aren't together anymore. So trying to get things in my name have been a real fucking hassle. Been wow. a, Oh, yeah. It's been a goddamn nightmare. Wow. Yeah. So I've been divorcing for three years now, just yeah. trying to keep the things that are mine. Yeah. Yeah. That's so insane. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, you know, we all, I feel like everybody in the adult industry has their, you know, financial discrimination mm -hmm. story. In fact, um, the FSC just published uh, data that two thirds of sex workers have lost access to either a bank or a financial service, while 40% uh, have had an account closed within the past year. And we were, you know, talking about this earlier and, you know, I run a business and to be compliant with the California state law, I applied for workers comp because you have Absolutely. to have that yeah. as a, you know, employer in California. And I got um, approved, you know, through Hartford and I had workers comp with them for like two months and then they sent me a letter and they, yeah, they, they found out what I did for a living and they shut me down because I'm like a high risk industry. And I'm like, I'm just trying to like abide by the law right. and like cover my employees in case one of them gets hurt. I'm literally trying to like run right. a small business by the way I'm supposed to. I'm trying to be legitimate. I'm trying to be a good citizen. And like y'all fuckers won't let me. They won't let you. And so, you know, you get into these positions to where the feds came and knocked at my door because they were wondering why everything was in my husband's name and all the money was being run through his accounts. And it's like, you put me in a box, bro, and now you're pissed because I'm operating the box. So now, you know, that was a two and a half year IRS investigation that I had to go through and spend. I don't even want to tell you how much money just to survive the audit that I was, you know, it, they, they ended up finding I actually overpaid and had to send me a check back for just fucked, right? But I mean, they sent agents to my house to question me for two hours about this entire thing. And it's like, they were pissed because I was operating the box, but I'm just trying to follow the rules, bro. Like, I won't I won't lie, they subpoenaed me for my I know they do, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Everybody got subpoenas, I got, yes, <laughs> I know. That's not, yes. I didn't know what was going on, yes. but that yes. makes sense. Yeah, fuck, <laughs> yeah. I know. God. And that's how I knew is because people I was friends with and I was working for were like, listen, bitch, you got subpoenas out everywhere. And I was like, oh, really? That's weird. And then I get off the plane and my brother's like, the feds are out the door. So I have to like drive home and have this interview with these two federal agents who go through my last seven years of all of my income wondering, why is your house in your husband's name, but it's all your money? And I'm like, you guys did this. Like, I'm just trying to live, bro. I'm just trying to have a house. What was their reaction to that? Did they like, did they seem like they were sympathetic or did they seem confused? Yeah, you know, actually, or... I, I hate to like give credit to, to, <laughs> to, to the IRS, but they were actually kind of cool because they, I mean, they, they sat down and they weren't like super accusatory and they were asking me questions about the things. And I have all my paperwork because I've gone through this forever and mm -hmm. ever. And they were actually kind of understanding and I didn't have a lot of problems after this, but now I'm targeted. I'm going to have a red flag on my back forever and ever. I have a whole list of lawyers on my docket that I pay all the time. I mean, it's just, it's costing me a fortune just to live this life. Yeah. That's why you need to be fin -dom. This is why I'm a fin -dom. This is why This guys... is why, because my relationship with money, Holly, this is what it keeps doing. It just keeps me getting deeper and deeper in this like greediness. I need more because I'm, I'm, I need more. Like I yeah. have to have more to survive now. Yeah. Yeah. God, that is wild. It is wild. And now I'm 38 and I don't talk about this a lot, but now I'm 38. I'm at the end of my childbearing years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I have to have a kid. Like if mm -hmm. I'm going to have a kid, it's now or never. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried because how do I know I'm going to have a bank account next? Or how do I know I'm going to be able to buy a car or get another house loan? Am I going to have to get married again just to buy a car or to buy a house?